I'm Dr. Geeta Lakshmi working in the Tamil Nadu Agricultural University. I'm working currently in the Abu Climate Research Center and uh, almost uh, I've put some 20-25 uh, years of service on teaching as well as in the research in the field of climate and uh, its changes and um, its impact on agriculture and adaptation and so on. And uh, in, in this university, we are doing uh, two, three important projects related to climate change to assess its impact on rice-based food cropping system as well as the uh, dry land cropping system, what impacts it would have and also how to uh, manage those things by doing some adaptation practices. We are closely moving with the farmers and also we are moving with the policy makers to inform them what changes are expected in the state as a whole and uh, how we can manage the situation in the near future as well as in the long term plans for consumer. So this is briefly my background. Uh, we have taken up some study at agroclimatic zone level. Uh, say, uh, we have got seven agroclimatic zones in Tamil Nadu, and um, uh, we have taken up individually the representative of our stations data, long term data we have taken, and we have looked into like what sort of uh, changes as far as temperature is concerned and as far as rainfall is concerned. These are the two parameters which we have looked into. And um, as far as temperature is concerned, there is a definite increase is uh, seen in all the agroclimatic zones. And uh, more interestingly, we could see that uh, the magnitude of increase in the minimum temperature is uh, higher than the uh, maximum temperature. That is one observation we could uh, find uh, almost invariably in all the agroclimatic zones. As far as rainfall is concerned, we did not find a significant trend, either increasing or decreasing. But one important thing which we noticed was consecutive years the drought occurred I and mean, then there was a one or two years break that means it was either normal rainfall or above normal rainfall. But when the drought occurs it is almost a two three years consecutive drought is occurring which is really impacting the agriculture in this part of the country. Uh, so this is uh, these are the major changes we found as far as the temperature and other rainfall is concerned. Um, basically, uh, mostly I have worked on the uh, mid part of uh, Tamil Nadu region, uh, that's, uh, that's mid Kaveri region I would rather say, like uh, starting from Erode and then Karur and Trichy and those are the districts uh, we were working on the dry land ecosystem as well as the irrigated ecosystem and we also worked on the Delta region, Kaveri Delta region. So these are the major recent regions we have concentrated on assessing the impact. And we have also assessed the impact at river basin scale in over five major river basins Kaveri, and then uh, Pandukula Malia, Tamirapani, and then Vaite, Pala. These are the five river basins we have worked on uh, how the um, climate change would impact the water availability to the agriculture as well as how the crops would uh, get impacted. And um, we, we could see that, like, um, the, uh, we, we have uh, collaborative projects. Uh, uh, running with uh, many countries and one of the important projects we call as uh, Clima Rice which is uh, uh, becoming as a Clima Adapt uh, project now the, the third phase of the project is called as Clima Adapt we are running it in subsequent, uh, so, I mean, uh, successfully for 8 years now the same project from the same funding agency which is the Ministry of Foreign Affairs Norway we are running the project so in this project we had in the first phase we had IPRC Hawaii as our partner who have developed uh, for the whole of Tamil Nadu um, kind of uh, what changes are expected in the near future as well as in the far future. Uh, it is based on the earlier IPCC scenarios, a one b scenario we have followed in that particular case. And uh, we, we could see that um, especially as far as the water requirement of the crop is concerned, in the Delta region we could find that uh, when a rice crop is grown with 1200 millimeters of water as of now, uh, in the future um, kind of a climatic condition, if we don't change any practices with the same management conditions, business as usual condition, the water requirement would be 1500 millimeters, close to that, 1490 or 1500 millimeters. So, this is the kind of uh, uh, water requirement uh, we expect in the future to come. So we have developed adaptation strategies accordingly. 
So now we are advocating a system of rice intensification wherein we follow a practice called alternate wetting and drying as one of the uh, important component of the desai. Uh, so in, in this case, what's happening is uh, we are uh, irrigating the crop and then uh, it's only to 2.5 cm depth of the water we stagnate. Then we let, it, let the uh, uh, crop grow and we don't irrigate until and otherwise we have uh, hairline crops found on the soil. And moreover, we just keep the water tubes inside. Uh, means it's a hollow tube with the perforations. We just uh, fix it in the field. And in that, even if the drying is happening on the surface, there are some uh, moisture available at the root zone level. So we just wait until that particular level, wherein the crop could withstand without impact upon the yield. Then we let the second irrigation to follow. So by that way, we could see that almost uh, something around 22 to 27 percent saving in irrigation could be achieved without the yield reduction. If we follow the practices, other SRI principles or, or as well, we could see that in addition to water saving, we can also improve the yield by around 20 percent So that is the finding which we have got in the large, uh, experiments conducted in the uh, large scale with the involving farmers uh, farming community. Uh, so we have also analyzed what is the level of adoption of a different uh, practices of or principles of SRI? All the farmers cannot uh, follow all the principles, so we call it as modified SRI. Uh, so some of the things which are really tough for them to adapt, they are not adapting. The thing is like laser leveling, uh, which uh, once they are doing it, but second time, third time, they don't do it, they just follow the same thing. So that is one practice uh, um, which is followed once in a while, only, not every season. So that is one thing. Second thing is the young ceiling. Normally the recommendation is going for very young ceiling, kind of 12 to 14 years old. But for all practical purpose, farmers go with the 15 to 16 years old ceiling. That is the kind of thing they follow. And here one ceiling is recommended, whereas they go with two to three ceiling because they go for mechanization in planting. They don't go with the they go with square planting, but they are not doing it manually. So then to handle the mechanization, they just do it with the two ceilings or three ceilings. This is the kind of modifications we are seeing. But all the people are following almost um, wetting and drying uh, type of irrigation and polar weeding. Polar weeding is another important thing which the farmers are following. We find that the tiller number is increasing and uniform maturity is uh, happening, which is actually contributing to increase the yield. So, this is one practice which we are following. For measuring the water, uh, quantum of water uh, which was used by uh, flooded condition, conventional condition as well as this one. We follow a very systematic uh, measurement system. Uh, we fix the uh, water meters and um, all the gadgets we fix it. And then for a larger field size of uh, something around 5 to 6 acres, uh, one bigger plot we take it for one intervention and the same similar plot is taken for another intervention in the same location. I mean we take it as a two branches of kind of things. Then we quantify how much water, how much, uh, I mean uh, how many days interval we are um, irrigating, all those things are recorded and we just quantify the water measurement. So this is what we have uh, done in the climate arise and climate adapt the uh, water system. And we also follow other kind of interventions like uh, um, informing the farmers on uh, when to fertilize, how to fertilize and kind of things because uh, greenhouse gas emission is one of the most important thing which is happening um, in the recent times so that is actually uh, increasing our temperatures. So we inform the farmers like uh, how to manage their fertilizer uh, quantum as well as uh, time of application oh. so that the emission, uh, greenhouse gas emission from the rice ecosystem is minimized. Like um, as you are saying, uh, the research on this monsoon is very many mundane compared to South East monsoon. It's quite obvious because uh, the region covered by North East monsoon is very minimum. Less than 15% of the area is covered by North East monsoon. But uh, now people have uh, uh, shown interest on understanding the Northeast Monsoon as well. And the uh, Regional Meteorological Center in Chennai and IIT in Pune, and there are a few um, good research papers have come out. And we also are doing some of the research on the Northeast Monsoon aspect of it. Um, as far as this uh, climate uh, kind of things are concerned, uh, we are not using one model now. We use 20 different simulation models developed from various parts of the world, different uh, UK metaphysics model we are using, we are using um, Italy model, we are using uh, the US models, we are using Australian models, all those models. So 20 different GZMs are now used and we are downscaling the 
current uh, scenarios, future scenarios. What we do is, we, we don't simulate from current time, but we simulate also the past. Okay? So what we do is, we just uh, simulate the um, climate starting from 1970s onwards, and we look like how, the, how it is behaving. So based on that, we have chosen five important models which are very closely simulating the current climate condition and then we are projecting it for the future. We believe that if a model is predicting the current climate successfully, it would also simulate the future climate. And in that also what we are doing is, so in those five models, we were very specific in choosing those five models because we put kind of a four quadrants, one is warm, dry, another one is warm, wet, the, uh, the other side, it is cool, dry and cool wet. These are the four quadrants we uh, do. So the current climate, we keep it at the center. We just choose other four models wherein it is very close um, to these four conditions but falling on the four quadrants. So we just try to capture all kind of variability within the five models. We take the models individually and also we take ensemble of the model so that we minimize the uncertainty in projecting the future climate based on the past uh, accurate uh, prediction. So this is how we try to tackle it. Um, again, it's a very interesting question. One thing is uh, uh, the sector of farming, we all very well know because uh, our uh, mostly more than 80% of the farmers are small and marginal farmers. And for them, the main livelihood itself is coming from the agriculture part of it. And either they have to go as an agriculture labor or they have to produce something in their own field wherein their land holding size is less than one hectare. So that is the kind of living. And most of the farmers, more than 50% of the farmers are uh, belonging to the tri land category wherein the success of the crop production relies only on the rainfall situation in the crop growing season. And you know, like, um, we experienced uh, a different kind of situation. Each and every year is becoming an extreme year. That's what the past decade has uh, uh, given us a lesson, I, I should say. Uh, we started moving with the farmers uh, from 2008 onwards. You know, each and every year is giving us a new, new lesson. Okay. Uh, one thing is, uh, like, uh, our uh, bureaucrats, like, uh, the administrators, they just listen to us on uh, what changes are expected and uh, they make plans in, in consultation with the Tamil Agriculture University scientists. For a, what, one example is when they were fixing the target for food grain production of this year, they were just calling us, having a discussion. What is the kind of forecast, seasonal rainfall prediction is expected so that that could be integrated for fixing the target of and the another important thing is, last year peculiarly, what happened was there was a drought kind of a situation which happened. Then they have just asked it, what is the contingency plan? Even though there was a hue and cry from the farmer's side, we advocated that it has to be controlled irrigation, even the controlled release of water from the metro dam to the downstream. So that was followed, and you know, the yield levels were much higher than what the normal used to be. Like, uh, th there was a continuous flow of water means they don't uh, relish uh, the importance of the water and they just overuse the water. Whereas when the controlled kind of irrigation was given, uh, there was a lot more feeders and uh, there was a good yield uh, which could be obtained. So this is uh, one kind of a short term plan which we are seeing. And then they are very much supportive of through some of the project like now NMSA is picking up this National Mission on Sustainable Agriculture Every state is picking up and then Tamil Nadu is also picking up that particular thing. And here we are concentrating on the dry land blocks, not on the uh, red crops, mm -hmm. but we are concentrating on the dry land, dry land blocks, integrating the farmers and their needs. There was a kind of a village level workshops have been conducted for need assessment and based on their requirement to maximize the water use efficiency, to maximize the production, all the line departments have been integrated to put the proposal and to put the plan. So we have already submitted the plan for two, uh, the most driest uh, district of uh, Tamil Nadu. So this is one particular thing which is happening. Uh, and the other thing is this iron bomb. You know the iron bomb project. Um, so the iron bomb project is looking at uh, in the, in the 
cannot come and tell us uh, how best the watering's efficiency could be increased and uh, the yield of the crops could be increased. A lot of capacity building programs are also taken up by the government of Tamil Nadu in uh, uh, coordination with Tamil Nadu Agriculture University and the Public Works Department uh, to build the capacity of the farmers to face the extreme weather conditions and situation. And uh, they are also uh, promoting crop insurance kind of work. Previously, our government was very positive about the weather-based crop insurance, but now they are um, switching over to MNES, Modified National Agriculture Insurance Scheme. They are promoting all the farmers to enter into that scheme uh, so that uh, some part of their losses could be compensated in, in the event of extreme weather events. So these are some of the initiatives taken up uh, from the government side, uh, integrating all the line departments and the universities. Thank you, ma'am. It's been a pleasure talking to you uh, about uh, climate change adaptation and agriculture in Tamil Nadu. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to share some of my views as well.